What is going on, everybody? It is Monday, November the 8th, and that means it's time for my news radar. Over the last few weeks and months, we have seen so much discussion about the Samsung Galaxy Note series dying a slow, painful death. Whether or not that was true or false, then we heard all kinds of crazy things about the S22 Ultra. We saw these CAD renders. We saw all sorts of different designs. Well, now we know officially what is happening. The, basically, the Note is just turning into the S22 Ultra, and we now have, thanks to front page tech, and this is via Pocket Now, their description of this. We now know for sure 100% what the S22 Ultra is going to look like because Mr. John Prosser once again with the big leaks here showing off actual physical photos of the S22 Ultra. And you might notice here, you know, we've talked about a design like this in the recent past, and it is basically what I showed you guys a couple of weeks ago. It's just now we have an actual phone. Pretty funny here that it actually says there, confidential, no photo allowed. <laughs> <laughs> and there, of course, is a photo of it. It looks a lot like the LG Velvet, which is kind of strange because this shares a code name with an LG phone. This code name was Rainbow, which was a code name for an LG phone uh, that got canceled as well. I believe it might have been the sequel to the V series line, I think was codenamed Rainbow. Anyways, I digress. This is effectively the Galaxy Note. You've got the squared off body as you're used to seeing. You actually do have the S Pen silo as we scroll down here and look at what's going on. Uh, you see there the S Pen in the bottom. There's the silo for it. This is for all intents and purposes, this is the Note. Now we're supposed to be getting a 108 megapixel sensor, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a 10 megapixel 3X telephoto as alongside a 10 megapixel 10X telephoto. That's gonna be this guy right here. That's gonna be a periscope style camera. Now this phone is going to be kind of a relatively thick phone as you get down here on it. And of course the cameras do protrude ever so slightly out of the back. As you can kind of see from this angle, you do have a camera bump, but I kind of like that they're individual bumps. It's not one giant bump module. They're individual bumps inside an already relatively thick phone. I kind of like this design. It doesn't draw quite as much attention to the camera region as having a giant monolith jutting out from the back of the device. What do you guys think of this design? Is this something you're interested in? I know a lot of you guys love having a stylus. You use the Surface Pen and so forth. Are you interested in what is a de facto Galaxy Note? It looks like we're going to be waiting till about February for this thing to come out. So I also recently spoke about the new ability to run Android apps on Windows 11. And I showed this functionality off on my Surface Pro 7. And that functionality, a few things have changed, right? So first off, it is now available to you if you are on the dev channel or the beta channel. If you don't know what I'm talking about on Windows 11, you have to go into the insider options, go to your Windows update, Look for Windows Insider, sign up, become an insider, put it on the dev or the beta channel, update, and this will now be applicable to you. And basically what will happen is you're gonna have a copy of the Amazon App Store, but this App Store is a little bit light on apps. So side loading is what you're gonna wanna do. And I already showed you a tutorial about how to side load uh, using the Windows 11, Amazon App Store, all this stuff, kind of circumventing it and sideloading that way. But there is now a new, much easier, much better method to do this. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. It's called WSA Tools. And uh, Simone Franco, 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 go with Franco, uh, tweeted this out just the other day. And I'm going to show you right now a quick video that I just recorded on my Surface Pro 7 of exactly how to do this. So let's kind of just watch through this now and I'll show you exactly how it works. So once you're on Windows 11 dev or beta, you're going to, be able to go to the store and search for Amazon App Store and you're going to see exactly this. Once you see that, go ahead and install it. Okay, you're going to get this pop up. Go ahead and let it download. It's going to take a minute for it to download. But once that's finished, that will be step one. All right, at that point, you're going to click on the link in the description, which will bring you to this web page here for WSA Tours. You're going to click on install slash open, which will prompt to open up the Microsoft Store. 
go ahead and install that. You can see there, mine says open because it was already installed. You're gonna wanna go ahead and install it. At that point, let's back up. My video is moving too quickly. At that point, you're gonna hit your start button and type in Windows subsystem for Android until that option there pops up on screen and you're gonna click on it to get this menu here. Now you're looking for developer mode right down here. You're gonna wanna toggle that box on and then click on manage developer settings underneath there. At that point, you're gonna scroll down until you find USB debugging. This needs to be turned on. I find it right now. Make sure that box is ticked. I untick it to tick it again to show you. It's gonna pop up, hit okay, and make sure it's in that position. Once you've done that, the work is pretty much done. So I'll show you here why we're doing this. This is the Amazon App Store itself. Once you get signed in here, you're gonna discover that there just aren't very many apps worth downloading. It's pretty sparse, there's just not a lot there worth messing with. So instead, what you're gonna do is you're going to go to the second link in the description, which is for a, an APK called the Aurora Store. You're going to click on Downloads, you're gonna click on Stable, and then just download the most recent one there. You're gonna see the dates to the side. Go ahead and let it download. Then you're gonna open up that WSA Tools app. Click on Select at APK and select the Aurora Store. Now what we're doing now is we're installing a different app store. So we're stuck with the Amazon one that doesn't have many apps in it. Not anymore, now we have the Aurora Store. So once this thing pops up, there is some setup that you need to do. Just kind of tick boxes. This first box here is a little bit confusing. Leave it alone on session installer and hit next from there. You have to go through, pick your, your look, your accent color, then grant all these permissions. Just let it do what it needs to do. At this point, it was kind of strange because I was clicking the next button and nothing was happening. So I literally had to close it and then open up the Aurora store again, which by the way, the Aurora store will now appear in your start menu and then just hit next a bunch of times and then it'll let you finish. You can sign in however you'd like to sign in. And at that point, you've got a list of apps. Now, apps that require the Google Play services are probably not going to work. However, a lot of other apps are going to work. Instagram, Facebook, these things should all work fine. Here's TikTok, which you'll see I downloaded, I installed. TikTok is working just fine. So if you want to sideload apps onto your Windows 11 installation, this is by far the easiest way to do it. Now, I showed you there uh, sideloading the Aurora store, but you can sideload almost any APK you want. Try them out. See what happens, worst case scenario, it just didn't work. So let's talk about Android 12L again. If you don't know, Android 12L is going to be a new build of Android that is meant to take advantage of larger screens as well as foldable devices. Android has long been criticized for not being great with larger screens. It's meant for a small screen, it just scales up and it just doesn't look that good. And a lot of the things that they're doing I've talked about already in the past. You can see here in their own documentation, their own developer preview of Android 12L, you'll see things like dual paned notification bars. You've got plenty of horizontal space, so let's just show you two things instead of one. Lots of logical things there. How about a task bar, like on the Z Fold series, to drag apps up to split screen better? How about compatibility to make any app just fit and work a little bit better? There's lots of good things here, but a lot of people are wondering in this, how is this going to affect Surface Duo? Because it is a dual screen device. Well, there is a post on Reddit, and I hope he doesn't mind me just showing this because it's excellent, from Daniel Rubino, where basically someone asked exactly this. They said foldables that have one screen, basically saying, well, Android 12L isn't going to mean much to Surface Duo 2, and Daniel Rubino does a fantastic job here of just breaking out what he thinks about Android 12L and what he thinks will happen here with Surface Duo. Brings up a great point. Take a screenshot with your Surface Duo and you will realize that Android does not see Surface Duo as a dual screen device. This was kind of something that I guess I knew, but I didn't know in another way because it kind of was eye-opening to me that he's right. Android sees Surface Duo as a single screen device because when you take a screenshot, you get one big screenshot. It took them months to make it only screenshot the one screen. You get a bar down the middle. Android sees Surface Duo as any other tablet most of the time. And this part here is extremely interesting to me. So let's read this here. Google considers foldables and dual screen the same for app dev, including the new split 
screen app layout outlined in Android 12 L. So let's look at what he's talking about here. So this new split screen layout, you can see exactly what I mean here. So dragging up an app, split screen, split screen, just like what we have on the Z Fold 2. Let's go back here. So Google considers foldables and dual screens the same for development of this UI. Android treats dual screens as one screen with apps in two panes. And if you think about this, He's exactly right. Google doesn't need to know these are two distinct, two separate screens. All it has to do is think of this as a tablet, which defaults to split screen. Think about any other tablet and imagine that you draw a software line down the middle of the screen of the tablet and then make it so the icons over here, split screen over here, and icons over here, split screen over here. And you could effectively do the same exact thing. That's all that's happening with Surface Duo. That's the only thing that they're doing. And Microsoft had to build this design effectively on top of Android already. In Android 12 L, we've made split screen easier than ever to discover and use. Users can now drag and drop their favorite apps into a split screen directly from a taskbar, or they can use a new split action in the overview to start split screen mode with one tap. Read what he says here. Google is effectively building what Microsoft Launcher on Duo is already doing into the tablet itself. Now, obviously, let's take some of this with a grain of salt because, I mean, look, he may have great sources. He may not, but you know, I don't think he's being 100% percent like I know exactly what Microsoft is doing with everything but it does appear that he's correct here right so let's not bash him over the head if some of this winds up not being 100 percent correct this is just interesting stuff to consider so basically the work that Microsoft did to make two, two screens work well on Android it appears Google is just doing this themselves in Android 12 L and they do talk about dual screen devices here a folding feature is a type of device feature that provides information related to the fold of a foldable display or the hinge between the two physical display panels of a dual screen device. So basically, this is what this has me wondering and thinking. I've long thought that Microsoft Launcher is doing a lot more heavy lifting and a lot more work on Surface Duo than a normal launcher has to do. You know, back on the original Duo, when you would install another launcher, Microsoft Launcher would stay on top. It would stay like overlaid, kind of meshed in with each other. That's not normal launcher behavior at all. Sometimes on Duo 1 and Duo 2, if you're doing things too quickly, you can almost click on an icon that's behind the app that you're using. And this tells me that this launcher is existing as some sort of overlay on top of Android in a way that a normal launcher simply does not function. And it makes me wonder if this is built into Android 12 L, will that dramatically reduce the workload that Microsoft Launcher is having to take on and could that cause stability in the device to improve in a dramatic way? This is all very speculative, right? But it's definitely something worth thinking about. And we've also heard rumblings that there's some cool stuff coming for Surface Duo in early 2022 because Microsoft doesn't see this as a, oh, we've done Duo 2 and we're done now. Microsoft does apparently internally see Duo as a long-term strategy. You know, a lot of people think very short-term with these devices. Duo 1 came out and it flopped. Oh, it's done. Duo's dead. Duo 2 comes out and it's it's better, but people still kind of panned it a little bit. And people said again, oh, it's dead. There's never going to be a Duo 3. Duo 3 is coming. Microsoft has a ton of money and patience. Look back at some of the other Surface products. Surface Pro 1 and 2 weren't that great. 3 was really where things started going the right direction. Perhaps Surface Duo 3 with things like Android 12 L are going to start to really look up. Lots of fun stuff to think about. Thanks to Mr. Rubino for this epic post here. I will link to this as well if you want to just read everything that he said. Lots of good links, lots of good information. So guys, that's all the news I do have for you today. Be sure to check back every Monday and Friday for the next edition of my news radar. Thanks for making it to the very end of this video and hitting that subscribe button or that join button because it does help me out an absolute ton. Guys, stay tuned for more content like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.